Facts uncommonly clear. I gotta find who's now number one, and why my angel eyes ain't here. Alex Frank on the bass, everybody.
and it begins the sound of violins the song of birds high on the wing you taught my heart to see why does this that heart of mine feel like a valentine you smiled and suddenly it's spring you taught my heart to sing my heart was an empty shell
a very an emotional moment for me. When I sold steamers, I had figured this was the end of steamers. The day that I found out that steamers is coming back and, and at this amazing place, Campus Jacks, I, I, I was like the best Christmas gift. When Terrence Love from Steamers and Jacks kind of combined to create these Steamers Jazz Nights, it just seemed like the most most perfect thing to have happen. The whole musical community here is excited about that. Seeing, wow, what a lovely place. It's got beautiful sound, light, video, everything, and the food was fabulous. And they were doing the thing right. One of the things that I love most about Campus Jacks is when the sound system and the stage is so beautiful, the best musicians in the world want to play there. I talk to musicians and I go, hey, you want to come down and play with me at Campus Jacks? Yeah. Campus Jacks, yes! Well, I've been all over the world and I've seen a lot of different musical environments. The talent here is so off the charts. I mean, it's hard for people that aren't from here to understand how good here is. Only the best musicians, all the time. It's one of the things I want to do is present the music in the greatest way. I want the musicians to feel welcome. I want them to feel at home. I want them to feel like they're just not background music. The team here has just made so many efforts to not only bring the musicians and the audience together like Terrence was doing for so long, but to do it at a really high quality. I've been doing clubs for, you know, again, more years than I care to count. And this is a very rare um, example of, of how a music venue can run and, and be set up. And I, I feel nothing but care. Sano and the Jason Fabus Quartet. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, hello. Greetings, fine people of Newport Beach and beyond. Welcome to Campus Jacks. Quick show of hands, who's uh, first time here at Campus Jacks? Any? That's what we like to see. That's a good thing to see, actually. Uh, so we're building a nice community here around, uh, I'm just going to say live music, because there's so much good live music here. On Thursdays, we do have a lot of live jazz. And what you're hearing tonight is a bit of a tribute. If you look at the uh, awesome illustration on the board, handsome men playing the saxophone. But on the left there on alto is Mr. Paul Desmond. And then next to him on the Barry sax is Jerry Mulligan. Yeah, <laughs> these are two pioneers of the, the saxophone world. Uh, most saxophone players grew up listening to them. Uh, I have an awesome story that I'd love to share with you, but I'd like to play some music first. So uh, this is going to be the title track of this album called Two of a Mind, uh, which came out in 1962. Please go home and listen to the real album. We are tributing it because it's so good. I want you all to listen to that as well. But this is the title track that they called Two of a Mind. Thank <laughs> you. 
I have to do a little homework, so I brought the album with me. If I don't do this, we'll get in trouble. So they say the album's from 1962, but it was actually kind of a compilation of three different recording sessions with three different rhythm sections. So Paul and Jerry stayed put, but there were three sets of drummers and bass players. Would you like to hear? Yeah. Story time. So, tracks one, two, and eight, kind of an interesting number there. But of course, Wendell Marshall, a very famous bassist, I believe he played with uh, the Duke. Uh, Not Duke. <laughs> no, who did uh, Paul Desmond played with him? Dave Brubeck. So Wendell Marshall on bass, and then Connie Kay on drums. Love Connie Kay. Uh, tracks three, six, and nine was Joe Benjamin on bass with a guy named Mel Lewis on the drums. And uh, I happen to know our drummer friend here, Kevin, loves him some Mel Lewis. And we love that. So, And then finally, tracks four, five, and seven was John Beale and then Connie Kay again. And then also, yeah, Ed Shaughnessy also drummed on the album. Yep. So it's an interesting little compilation. And uh, that's kind of why it's so mysterious and hasn't really gotten super popularized, because it wasn't like a big hit album. Uh, so we like to find things like that and, and tribute it. So this next song is one that is a favorite of ours, written by Duke Ellington, that we're going to try to play 
now in this style. Now that we've opened up with two songs from the album, we're going to try to break away a little bit, do some of our own music in that style. So here's a tune by Duke, Just Squeeze Me.
Okay, can I do a quick story? All right. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Uh, I grew up in a town. This is where you guys do the da-da-da-da-da. Grew up in a town called Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please stop. Please. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, it's okay. All right. <laughs> I love that. So uh, I w when I was in high school, I did this jazz competition. A lot of students do that. They try to do a competition so they can get scholarships for jazz camps or going to college. And in high school, I did this thing in Milwaukee called Jazz Unlimited. It's still a, a great uh, scholarship program out there in Milwaukee. And at the end of my audition, the guy says, hey, man, you sound great on that alto. You know, you really have a sound like Paul Desmond. And I looked at him, I was just like, uh-huh, because I had no clue who Paul Desmond was at the time. I was just was kind of playing dumb and saying, like, oh, yeah, I sounded like Paul Desmond. And I just remember going back into my car, my dad picked me up, and I know he's out there watching, so everybody, round of applause for Stephen Fabus, my father, <laughs> who is awake. <laughs> so he picked me up, and, and he says, so how'd it go? I said, well, he said I sounded like Paul Desmond. And he goes, great. He goes, do you know who Paul Desmond is? I was like, no. And immediately, he's like, okay, and he puts on Dave Brubeck Quartet. And uh, really, it, it all started right there. So not everybody has uh, parents that are musicians themselves, but I'm definitely grateful that I had parents that were advocates of music and let me explore it and helped me explore it. So with that being said, I'm going to be Paul Desmond tonight, and I couldn't think of anybody better than Mr. Salazano to be pulling in Jerry Mulligan style for you all. Mr. Salazano. And now these two schmucks back here. <laughs> I have the pleasure of playing with both of them um, pretty recently, actually. We've done a couple shows together, and it just was starting to gel. Uh, not only good friends, but they, they just play very well together. So Eric Sittner on bass and Kevin Vandenelsen on the drums. Yay. We're going to do a very uh, well-known Jerome Kern song, uh, but played the way they did it off the album. We hope you enjoy this one. 
Let's, let's see if you know this one. Thank you. 
Sal, just the way you look tonight, it's good to have you back. You know, he was in Boston. Did you fly in today? Think, which, which airline were you? Delta. We'd like to think Delta Airlines, the greatest airline, right? Never a problem. For getting Sal here on time. Sheesh, it was a rough weekend. I had a lot of musicians who were not getting their flights. Be careful out there, folks. We're glad you're back, Sal. How was Boston? Yeah, of course. I think you'd fit in real well out there. He saw baseball. Did you go to Fenway Park? Okay. All right, we're going to turn now to a, another favorite of mine that I want to adapt for this style of group. It's a tune written by Johnny Mercer, was made famous by the Pied Pipers. We're not going to be singing in harmony on this one, no, folks. This is Johnny Mercer's tune, Dream.
it's time we play a little blues. This is one they did on the album, and you can tell when you listen to it, it was not written. They were just having a good time making it up. And the story is, as they were getting to the end of the song, things started to get a little heated. <laughs> and uh, the, the thing that's going on in this album is Paul and Jerry are both kind of opposite personalities. Paul is afraid of Jerry. Look at him. He's sitting all nice, but he's afraid of Jerry. Jerry's a little more rough around the edges, and he plays with a lot of sass. <laughs> Hi, Sal. How are we doing? <laughs> and the, the kind of the bit here was that Paul was, uh, he was very bashful. He wouldn't always say that he was a great player. He would always brush off compliments and say, I'm not good enough. I'm still trying to get better. And he was very, like, afraid of playing with Jerry Mulligan. But when you listen to the album, it sounds like they're just, like, politely jousting, if that's the right way to say it. And on this song in particular, they start this little riff at the end where I think both their girlfriends were in on the session. And they said at the end of it, they said, it sounded like you were playing Flight of the Bumblebee. So they aptly named the tune Blight of the Fumblebee. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so we've been doing mostly improvised uh, music this whole night, but we are going to now tribute this one note for note, and I mean that. I think, Sal, yours is longer. Show them yours. <laughs> no <problem>. Inappropriate. <laughs> I think he's got two more pages than I got. Uh, so we have note for note transcription, and this is Hoagie Carmichael's iconic song. It was voted the song of the century, Stardust. And this is with a whole lot more notes. But this is straight off the album. We hope you enjoy their rendition of Stardust. This looks like a CBS receipt.
Once again, let's hear it for this band, Salazano. There they all are. Wow. <laughs> on the baritone saxophone. Mr. Eric Sittner on the upright bass. And my good dear friend, I've been out to Amsterdam with him. He is the swinging Dutchman himself, Mr. Kevin Van Den Elsen. Again, I urge you to, to please keep coming back to a great place like this. Thank you for everybody who puts this on here. Let's please have a round of applause for the faculty and staff here at Jax. You're going to see great music like this every Thursday. So please, uh, community is everything in these times, especially with the last couple of years of uh, you know, struggling to get out and play and stuff. So we really do appreciate the sense of community here at Campus Jax. And... Uh, we're going to end with a little song that I actually wrote, and it's a cheers to you all, named after my favorite go-to drink. Here's Tito's and Soda.
That about does it for us, folks. On behalf of myself, Jason Fabus, Sal Lozano, Eric Sittner, and Kevin Vanden Elson, we welcome you back, hopefully, in the near future. Check your calendars and come on back for some great music here at Campus Jack.